BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. We're on uh, slide number 78 for the, those in the PowerPoint. Uh, we're doing the City Gate, the City Gate Singular Messianic Bible Study. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Dot three. three. This is uh, study number 40. Este es el estudio number 40. Number 40. We're looking at the word pursue. Estamos, eh, la in verse 10 in the Brit Hadashah. But let's first um, understand something again. Pero vamos okay. Yeshua is talking. He's living in a Hellenistic society. And we know that from the book of Romans, where every man was doing sexually what was right in his own eyes. Sexually, yes. We've looked at Timothy, where the people were, I mean, I thought he was talking about New York City. Okay. So the society that we're living in today is really no different than the society that Yeshua was living in except for internet. And you can get places quicker today. But the society and the world was pretty much the same. Going on to the next slide, turn to 1 Timothy. Actually, let's start Matthew 5. Let's go to Matthew 5. Matthew 5, verse 10. Let's do our verse that we're looking at. Just in case you haven't been here for the 40 other weeks. Matthew, Matthew 5, verse 10. How blessed are those who are persecuted because they pursue righteousness for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Now we're, we've, been, we've gone over blessed uh, to understand blessed. We looked at Psalm 119 and um, following Torah means you're going to be blessed. But um, Yeshua then goes, says that you're going to be persecuted. Why would somebody be persecuted for wanting to do good? Because what we've seen this weekend and what happened in Virginia is very much what was going on in the time of Yeshua. Es, 
See, when you remove God, then every man will do what's right in his own eyes. So when you want to pursue righteousness, you're going against everybody else. And when you're going against everybody else, war is about to happen. Because who's to say that the Nazis are wrong? Who's to say that the Black Lives Matter is wrong? Because if you take God out of your society and you're being persecuted because you want to follow God's commandments, then the Nazis are right. The Black Lives Matters are right. So whoever's got the bigger guns and the best military is going to win. But this is why Yeshua said, Pursue righteousness. And then the kingdom of heaven will be yours. But if we live in a society that does not pursue righteousness, even in the, the, the Christian body and the messianic body, Because there's not many congregations or churches that are preaching the law. So when, when you remove God's laws, then you're going to be persecuted when you want to follow God's laws. I want to keep kosher. Well, then you try to find a kosher butcher. But the government won't allow that to happen because they don't want a kosher butcher. Because the animal's going to suffer if you cut its neck this way. Do you know that, that they're trying to stop kosher butchering in Europe? So Yeshua said in Matthew 5 verse 10. How blessed are those who are persecuted because they pursue righteousness for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Amen? So when you're trying to follow God's rules, like you want to grow a beard, you want to dress properly, you... Uh, don't disappear at work. Okay? Then people don't like you because you make them look bad. But Yeshua says, the kingdom of heaven will be yours. And let's just say, this life is short and eternity is long. And if you don't believe in eternity... Party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. Okay, so now, with, now that we've looked at Matthew 5, verse 10, our, what we're studying, hold your place there, and we're going to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 through 12. Okay. For the love of money is the root, is a root of all the evils. Because of this craving. Some people have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves to the heart with many pains. But you, as a man of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faithfulness, love, 
steadfastness, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you testified so well to your faith before many witnesses. Amen? Why do we have to pursue these things? You know, uh, righteousness, godliness, faithfulness. If we're under grace. You know, remember, Paul is the whole one that tells us we're under grace. Why is he telling his spiritual son, Timothy, who's, uh, who's not Jewish, because his mother's a Jew and his father's a Gentile, so he's not Jewish in the biblical way, why is he telling them to pursue righteousness? Well, one, they're living in a terrible society. They're living in a society that is loving money. Loving evil, that means they're following Nimrod. Nimrod is the king of all evils. Because Nimrod is Satan himself. Okay, some people wandered away from the faith. Okay, uh, but he's encouraging him in verse 11. Let's read verse 11 again. But you as a man of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faithfulness, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. Amen. Okay, why does he have to, have to pursue this? Okay, because everybody around him is not pursuing the law. They want to blend their life with the world and do their time, you know, do their shift on Shabbat. We have a lot of people like that that come to Beth Goyim. Uh, you know what I'm going to do this Shabbat? I'm going to go from table to table. And I'm going to ask you what you read this week and question you on it. Because a lot of people do their, their Shabbat shift. Do you think that the Father doesn't know this? And Yeshua was telling us this in Matthew 5 verse 10. He says you're going to be persecuted. Because you pursue righteousness. So here Timothy is being encouraged the same way. To, in the same way. Okay. In verse 11. How would he know what righteousness is? Okay. If he's going to pursue something. You know. You got to know what you're pursuing. Right. Okay, you know, like, you know, the football teams are getting ready for the season. The real football. Okay. Each team is going to be pursuing the goal. To win the Super Bowl. The, the Mets right now are pursuing the, the best pick in the baseball draft. Draft. Uh, I don't know what you call draft in la, Spanish. La, la de los okay. So w how would one pursue righteousness? ¿Cómo es que uno va a la how would one know what righteousness is? If we don't have to follow the, 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 the Torah anymore, si ya no que la Torah, what, what would be righteousness? And what would Rav Shaul be telling his son? Okay, so here he's pursuing it because the society is not. And because the society is not, it's going to be that much more. Yeah, that was my wife's phone. Okay. 
If he's pursuing something that the society is not, do you think that the society is going to like what you're pursuing? Well, we know from Yeshua's own own mouth. That's my wife getting a text. Um, in John, in the Gospel of John, chapter three, the darkness hates the light. So when we're trying to pursue righteousness, faithfulness. What's faithfulness? How can I be faithful? You know, can you be married 99% of the time? No, you can't be married 99% of the time. Come on, Kel, Rabbits and Kelly, you know, we've been together 33 years. It's time to, you know, try something else, another flavor. You know, you know, there's so many Latin women at the congregation. You know, maybe a Dominican woman or a Cuban woman or... <laughs> uh, you, you know, maybe a Mexican. You know, a cute little, Mexi cute little Mexican girl, a little bonita. But then... That wouldn't be faithfulness. So how are you faithful to him? How are you faithful to him? See, pursuing righteousness means it's a 24-hour job seven days a week. Because of the society that we are living in. But evidently, Timothy, Timotheus was also living in a society that was like ours. So how would he know what faithfulness is? Since the New Testament is not written yet. What is read in, in the synagogue every single Shabbat, says Yeshua, is the Torah. And when people say we need to get rid of it, then, then you're pursuing your own righteousness. And is your own righteousness what God thinks is correct? And will that righteousness be good enough for God to give you the kingdom of heaven? That's what's the saddest part about the church. And, that mess and also Messianic congregations that don't teach the Torah. Pursuing righteousness means you have a goal. The goal is to f finish the race. But not as a loser, but as a winner. So here in the CJB that we're reading in verse 11, how would I know what godliness is? If the church is saying we don't have to do the holy days anymore. Would that be godly or no? Would celebrating Christmas be godly or no? Well, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. Well, in scripture, does it tell me the date that he was born? Well, he was born on December 25th. No, that was the third pope. Putting 
a holiday on the winter solstice. Winter. Veronica solstice. I can't hear her, Tristan. Go. Equinoxio de invierno. Equinoxio de invierno. Thank you. Okay. Yes, so, sir. so, if you're doing the thing, something that you can't find in Scripture, si estás, este, algo que no en la then you're not pursuing righteousness, you're pursuing man. Entonces, no estás la justicia, estás el and if you're pursuing man, you're going to get man's reward. But if you're pursuing God si Dios, and being faithful, then did you hear your phone go off? Okay. Um, if you're being, pursuing faithfulness, then you're going to receive the kingdom of heaven. So in Matthew 5 verse 48 that we didn't go to, to this tonight, the Lord says, Yeshua the Messiah says, be perfect for your heavenly Father is perfect. So can we pursue righteousness? Yes, we can. But most people are lazy. Anybody notice that? Most people are lazy. They'll start out, you know, running the race and then... Okay. So here, let's just read verse 11 again, then we'll move on to the next one. But you, as a man of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faithfulness, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. Amen? What is he fleeing from? The love of money. The love of evil. Cravings of the old self. Wandering away from the faith. Okay. When you want God over everything else. Then you flee from the old things. But that requires work. And it and Yeshua said, pursuing means an action that you have to do something. God's not going to do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. Because Yeshua already ran the race and then he said, my race is finished. But your race is not. That's why in verse 11 it says you. Because you're in charge of your heart. You have to do the work. My job is to give you the tools. But I'm not at your house. I'm not in your head. I'm not in your phone. Okay, I'm not on your computer. I'm not at your house. You know, you have to do your work. Because salvation is personal. But the promise from Yeshua is that if you pursue righteousness, he'll send the, 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 the lawyer, the counselor to help you. And then the kingdom of heaven will be yours if you win the race. Let's go on to the next slide. Let's turn to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2. Verse 21 to 23. Second Timothy 2, verse 21 to 23. 
If a person keeps himself free of defilement by the latter, he will be a vessel set aside for honorable use by the master of the house and ready for every kind of good work. So flee the passions of youth and doing with those, uh, d- along with those, sorry, it's not doing, along with those who call the Lord from a pure heart, pursue righteousness, faithfulness, love, and peace. But stay away from stupid and ignorant controversies. You know that they lead to fights. Amen? Okay, so here, I don't know how Paul's going to win people. You know, people get mad when I call people stupid. Well, I'm just following my cousin Paul. He called people stupid. Well, if the shoe fits, wear it. Okay? I forgot to mute that. Okay, who's the clown? Okay. So, anyway, let me mute this. Although the timing was good. Okay, so here back, let's read verse uh, 21. If a person keeps himself free of defilement, by the latter he will be a vessel set aside for honorable use by the master of the house and ready for every kind of good work. How will I know what defilement is? Okay. Where will I find the criteria for these things? Where will I have the rules for what makes something defiled? Will those rules be found in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament? No, they will not. The rules are reiterated in the New Testament. But the rules are written in the Old. Like when you're, you're offering uh, an offering to the Lord. It tells you what to look for in the animal. What, what makes the animal impure. The same goes for what we can and can't like. What did you say, Benjamin? Speak up a little bit. I got a man moaning downstairs. Okay. In in Torah, if you can't obtain um, the animal. Oh, um, you can do a, a monetary offering in lieu of it, it says in Torah. Like, let's say you made a really big mistake and you were you're a person of means. Uh, you have money. But we, we right here don't have an altar. Well, you can either ask Rav Will to do it on his altar... But a cow is going to take some time to burn that up and it's going to smell good and Brad Will might eat it. <laughs> but I just looked for somebody who wants to do an offering, uh, a sin offering today. Somebody wants to do a sin offering this coming Shabbat. But they're not, they're not going to be able to do the you know the cow or something like that so I looked up you know you can get pigeons and uh, uh, or doves they range in price from $40 to $400 per pigeon 
Yeah, it depends. If you buy the racing pin, then yeah. You got to translate that. Si compras palomas de carrera, te va a costar mucho, pero puedes comprar palomas entre 40 y 40 dólares y 400 dólares. But you have to try to to do what makes you acceptable. Tienes que intentar de hacer lo que te va a ser aceptado. And if you can't do it, then you might want to wait. You can say, I'm sorry to the Lord. But you want to, if you want to do it properly and do the offering properly, then you should wait until you can do it fully. Because why, why give your least to God? You should pursue everything that is Righteous. So if you can't do everything that time, then wait and say you're sorry to the Lord. Acknowledge your sin before Him. But still you have to do the other part. But pursuing righteousness means wanting to do everything that is required. So, if you, let's say, have the money for the offering, you have the money for the offering, but you don't have enough money to get here or you can't do it right now. Let's say you live within four hours. Then I would say wait until you can make the time to get here. I mean, if you live, you know, three quarters away across country, that's a different story. Okay, so you pursue righteousness <clears throat> is one knowing what the goal is. And in a society that we're living, you're going to make an altar? People freak out. You know, like one of the people that used to come are online with us. Flipped out because we do offerings. You can't build an altar. Avraham built an altar. Yitzhak Yaakov built an altar. And didn't God say, no matter where you live? Did not God know we were going to be living here in Estados Unidos? Uh huh. <laughs> okay. So, pursuing righteousness means people are going to persecute you because you want to do what scripturally is correct. If we look at verse 21 again, we see keeping yourself free from defilement. First part of the sentence. Contamination, Benjamin. What? Contamination, defilement, contamination, or ultrajar, or profanar. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Si uno se, se, se aparta de, de, de la contaminación. Okay. So the world is defiled. La, la, el mundo está contaminado. And because they don't know, they're not pursuing righteousness. Porque no están siguiendo la justicia. Not pursuing God's righteousness. No están siguiendo la justicia de they're Dios. pursuing their own righteousness. Están siguiendo su propia justicia. But here, Shaul is saying that Timothy... Keep yourself free from this defilement. You know, this is one of the part of Yeshua's teachings he heard about. Because remember, Shaul never met Messiah. He only heard him. Uh, 
He only spent a very limited amount of time with the, the Talmudin, the disciples. So he couldn't have learned everything Messiah said in that very short period of time. So then what is he, te what is he teaching Timothy here? Pursue righteousness by keeping yourself free from defilement. Okay, so what would contaminate you? Well, Torah is going to tell you what contaminates you. And once you know that shrimp cocktail contaminates you, or doing drugs contaminates you, even though the world says, oh, it's okay to smoke pot. God says that defiles your temple. And it also makes you fat. <laughs> okay. Now we move on to verse 22. And we say, Betsy Wetsy. Okay. So flee the passions of youth. And along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Huh? Okay. From a pure heart, pursue righteousness, faithfulness, love, and peace. Well, what is love? You know, Tina Turner said, what's love got to do with it? Everything. <laughs> okay. What is love? What is Messiah's definition of love? If you love me, you'll make me a white garlic pizza with fresh mozzarella. Extra cheese. <laughs> well, fresh, fresh garlic. Ooh, ooh, you know, slices. So what's love? Keeping God's command. John 14, 15. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So faithfulness goes with love. Amor es atado con el amor. Obedecer los mandamientos. I did. I'm sorry. Mario? <laughs> yes, Benjamin. Speak up a little bit. They're now playing music. If you could explain a little bit more, what does he mean by youthful lust? Youthful. ¿Qué quiere decir este, con las pasiones juveniles? See, a lot of times, young men don't think before they react. And sometimes older men. When you get older in the Lord, you tend to react to things a little bit slower. Because you've burned, been burned before. You, you listen to more stories before making a determination. But as we saw this past weekend, you didn't see a lot of old people in the crowd. You saw a lot of young people. So... Older people are, tend to be a little bit, they'll, they'll go to war. But it's got to be worth it. This was not worth it. Okay, you had the alt-right, which was wrong. And the alt-left, that was wrong. All those young men came looking for a fight and they found it. But really the biggest problem was the police. They didn't do their job. And that's where they're wrong. Your job is to keep the peace. 
And I don't give a hoot who told you to stand down. To, to let it happen. That police chief should be hung from a tree. So youth came together with youth. Gasoline and matches came together. What do you think is going to happen? Because there, so youth sometimes do not think things through. It is good to react in certain situations. Like when somebody's life is in danger. Then we react because life is precious to God. Torah teaches us to preserve life. At any cost. Okay. So youth, youthful, um, youthful lust is doing an action but not thinking of the equal and opposite reaction. A lot of men do not think with the top half of their body. They think with the lower half of their body. And they could be married and make a mistake that costs them their entire family. Because it was a moment of lack of reasoning. Generally a person that has more gray hair tends to think things through sometimes better. Well, if I get caught, she's going to take my house. She's going to take my car. She's going to take my kids and take most of my paycheck. And then for, ye and for years, you're finally paying it off. It's, okay. Well, it's cheaper to get married to somebody who's a godly woman to a godly man. But, you know, youthful lust, that's why the Lord said put the 20-year-olds in the military. Because you can say, go attack, and they'll go, yes. It's a fight. Yes, this is good. Sometimes when you get a little bolder, you're like, can't we talk first? Because, you know, my shoulder just ain't working. I mean, I'll, I'll fight, you know, if it's reasonable. But that's why the Lord says, send the leaders out to negotiate. Do Sun Tzu first, negotiate. Sun Tzu was reading the, the Torah. So he's in Torah it says negotiate first. Negotiate terms for peace. Because you're pursuing righteousness. Because when people die, somebody's sad. That was somebody's son, somebody's, somebody's child. Somebody's husband, somebody's father. So when you get a little older, you, you think things through before going to war. Okay, so when you're pursuing righteousness, you might be fighting against society because they're pursuing evil. The people, you're wor the people you're working with, the little Dominican that you were talking about, 
Hey, Haitian. Same island. Okay. She's not pursuing a relationship. She's pursuing fornication. But a godly woman is pursuing a man that fears God. And in the world that we're living in, I can't tell you how many articles I've read making fun of those that wait till marriage. You're going to wait till you're married? Yes, because I'm pursuing righteousness. I want it to be something beautiful. But in the world we're living in, if you say something like that, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll think very badly of you instead of thinking very good of you. That's a man that's going to honor his wife. That's a man who's going to be respectful of a woman. That is a woman that respects herself. It's the opposite of dead batteries. Reload. You need a speed loader. Okay? It's the, so when you're pursuing righteousness, you're teaching the young men to not look for the outside of the woman. Because beauty is skin deep. And ugly goes all the way to the bone. Okay? So in our marriage class, if you could have a good relationship with a woman who, even if she's married, has her head covered. And you don't really see her form. But you m d develop a, a relationship. When, if, you, if, that, if the Lord blesses that relationship. Because both of you were pursuing godly righteousness. That's a relationship that's going to last when times are not good. And when times are great. Because you're going to have a friend that is, that is pursuing the same righteousness as you. And then, you know, you might not be as handsome as you are today. You can look like that one day. <laughs> you see, you have his genes in you. You... You got the egg. You got the egg. Gene, you got the egg genes in you. Egg, huevo. Okay, the little head and the little feet and the big belly. Okay, but if if you're pursuing righteousness and she is pursuing righteousness and God puts you together then you pursue it together and when he two of you are together, Yeshua said, I'm there with you. But in verse 22, fleeing passions of youth is meaning controlling your urge. Especially in the society that we live in. But Yeshua was living in the same type of society. And we let, read that in Colossians. We've read it in Timothy here. And we let, read it in Romans. So we have to flee passions and pursue with a pure heart righteousness. But when you're trying to do that, 
you might feel alone because the call came in and you can't go. Your friends are calling you to go to the bar, but you can't because you know it's going to be bad. But when you're pursuing righteousness and everybody at work is pursuing fun and all you want to do is talk about the word and nobody else wants to talk about the word sometimes it can get a little lonely. But if you complete your race Yeshua says the kingdom of heaven will be yours. Because in heaven, you know what I'm going to like so much about heaven? I'm not going to have to explain, have to explain anymore how to keep Shabbat holy. <laughs> Because everybody's going to be doing it. Everybody's going to be the same. Everybody's going to love the same thing. Because there's only going to be Jews in heaven. There's going to be no Greeks in heaven. No Ecuadorians in heaven. No Colombians in heaven. No Mexicans in heaven. Certainly no Puerto Ricans in heaven. We're all going to be Jews worshiping in the same way. Because we pursued righteousness. But the key here is in verse 22. It, it happens when we have a pure heart. Then we know what love is. Because Yeshua said, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. And what are his commandments? Was he not there in the desert? Wasn't he the angel that had God's name inside of him? So what would be his commandments? That would be the a minimum starting with the ten. So if you can't keep the Sabbath holy, you're praying to idols, then you're not faithful. If you're not keeping the holy days, then you're not pursuing righteousness. But if you're going over to the family's house for Christmas, but you're not really celebrating it. Well, everybody's there in the family. Then you're not really pursuing righteousness. Keeping ourselves free from defilement. That means we can't go to the Christmas dinner with the family anymore. Because that's, that's to another God. Yes, sir. Uh, I just, I had a, a conversation with another believer. Um, You're a follower, he's a believer. Right. Um, this, this person tried to argue with me about keeping the law. And they kept saying that the only laws that they have to keep are the seven Noahide laws. So I asked this person, what are the seven Noahide laws? Where do I find them? Where, right, where can I find it? She says, she says, well, we don't have to keep Shabbat, but if we want to, we can. I said, help me understand something here. It's not, it's not God the same yesterday, today, and forever. Doesn't his word, doesn't he say that his word will not return unto him void? So if he told us that we have to keep Shabbat, that we can't eat the pig, and the Gentile, when he comes into Israel or to, to Messiah, he's engrafted into the natural olive tree, which means he's partaking of the blessings, doesn't he feed them from the same food that the, the tree feeds from? So doesn't he have to keep the laws? 
well, where else can I show this person what you just been saying? To a Gentile, eyewitness from the New Testament. You're saying, I'm a stupid Jew. You say, in 2 Timothy 2, verse 22, it says, pursue righteousness. Where will I find a biblical definition of this word so that I can pursue that? Then they have to talk about Torah. Right. But she said that we don't have we don't have to keep Torah because we're not Jews. I said, well, wait a minute, aren't we engrafted? Are aren't are those who come well, inside? Pause, inside pause. Where will I find the biblical definition? Of what righteousness is. It, it doesn't say for the Jew or the Gentile here. It says, I want to know what righteousness means. Okay. I, I want to know what, the, what God says is righteousness. Because Paul is saying, I have to do, I have to pursue this righteousness. So I have to know what the definition of righteousness is. Because we all have to be speaking the same language. Because Puerto Ricans don't speak Spanish. They speak Puerto Rican. Americans do not speak English. They speak American. You know, don't tell, you know, go, don't go to English and say we speak English. They'll hit you yeah. with a pointed <laughs> stick. Okay? So we all have to be speaking the same language. In verse 21, I would say, what is, what is the biblical definition of defilement? If Yeshua said, I'm to pursue righteousness, what does defilement mean then? And that's where you, you start, you never witness to a goy from the, the, the Old Testament. You only witness from the new. Give me any page of the Bible, any page of the New Testament. I will find, you tell me, turn to this page, I'll find a word that you're going to have to go to the Old Testament to give me my definition. And then you, if the person is searching for truth, But that's what most people are not. And that's why Matthew 7 verse 23 is very scary. Matthew 7 verse 23. Where Yeshua says, Get away from me, you worker of iniquity. But Lord, we preach in your name, Jesus. Yes, we healed in your name, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Holy Receive it. Okay. Okay. So, Yeshua is going to say to their face, you are not pursuing righteousness. So, so get the hell out of here. And then he's going to say goodbye. He's going to say it to your face. Because 
The kingdom of heaven is not theirs. So you use only the New Testament. Because you say, and you can always say, and the only uh, the other thing I do with these guys, I play like I'm an unsaved Jew. What do I need your Jesus for? Then they have to try to witness to you. <laughs> You're in sin. Well, what's sin? Where will I know what sin is? A one move checkmate. Going on to the next slide. Turn to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 3. First Peter th three. First Peter three, verse ten and eleven. First Peter three. Verse ten and eleven. For whoever wants to love life and see good days, must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Turn from evil and do good. Seek or pursue peace and chase after it. Amen? So are we to pursue peace with people? No. In our earlier Matthew study, Now remember, this is week number 40 of studying Matthew. Okay, hunger and thirst for righteousness. Pursue it. So we say, seek God. Seek peace with Him. Chase after Him. Then... Because we don't need to seek peace with the alt-left or the alt-right. We need to seek peace with our God. And then God will have the alt-right and the alt-left fight together against one another. And kill one another. And we could just stand there. Okay, you guys fight it out. I'll stand over here with my gun over here. Right there. Okay? You guys go to town on each other. Okay? But whoever wants to love life, seek good days. Now, he's got to keep his tongue from evil. How, how will I know how to keep my tongue from evil? Would be, would uh, saying Merry Christmas be evil? Feliz Navidad. Okay. How do I know that's evil? How do I know that's evil? What do you think there, young man, striped shirt man? He's been let out of prison. You're mentioning another God. And once you mention another God, it shows your unfaithfulness to Him. Because you are recognizing another little God and our God said He's jealous. How 
How do you keep your how do you keep your lips from evil? What's the difference between tongue and lips? How do you keep your lips from speaking evil? Praying over the ham. Praying over the what, Betsy? Okay. And in verse 11, it says, Turn from evil and do good. How will I know what is turning from evil? Where, if you're talking to that same person, how will I know what this evil is that Peter speaks of? Can I go to the company Christmas party? Can I go to the beach on Shabbat? No. Can you go to the beach any other time, really? It's hard. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of people that are dressed inappropriately. Like you go to Brazil. Okay. Um, I think most of the girls forgot their pants. Because on the beach, they got those uh, dental floss bikinis. Okay. So, how, how will I know what evil is? Because Yeshua is saying, pursue righteousness. So you have to know what is evil. And you have to know what is good. Because he's saying, pursue it. Because the people in the society are not pursuing it. And you're going to be, pers you're going to be persecuted... Because you want to make laws that say, no, the person can't dress like that on the beach. Oh, we got to get sun. It's healthy for us. Did anybody ever get sunburned while wearing a t-shirt at the beach? The sun can go right through the shirt. Okay, what else? What would be good? What would be seeking to do good? Every Friday getting ready for Shabbat. And if you have a job that won't allow you to have Shabbats off. Do you try to get out of that line of work? Or try to work something out where you can have Shabbats off and work every Sunday. Look at verse 11, please. Turn from evil and do good. Pursue peace and chase after it. Chase after this righteousness. Chase, and now the word peace there is the word shalom. And remember, we, we looked at the word shalom earlier in the studies. What did Jehovah give Pincus? He shoved a spear through two people. And God said, bad boy. Okay, no, he said, I'm going to give him a covenant of shalom because he chased those people. So we have to seek the same shalom. 
But when you're doing it, if you're being the one that's saying, no, we can't do this. No, we can't have gay marriage. No, we can't have euthanasia. No, we can't allow divorce. No, we can't allow um, smoking pot. Then you're going to be persecuted. Going on to the next slide. Now we're going to look at the word righteousness. We're now in the city gate, singular. Messianic Bible study. Metiahu 5 colon 10 dot 4 righteousness. Okay, so now we're going to look at a, the diamond. Okay, on what biblically is righteousness. Going on to the next slide. Let's go back to Matthew 5, verse 10. Any questions on the last part? About the word pursue. Any questions from WebEx? You guys are good? His phone is dead. And then been used often. <laughs> okay, any questions from Skype Payland? You good there, Martin? Okay. Yvonne, you're good? Good, everything's good. Okay. All right, Matthew 5, verse, any questions in the room here? What? Go ahead, Martin. Somebody's got a question. No, I was saying that Ivan is on YouTube. She's watching you on YouTube. YouTube? Okay. On YouTube. Hi. Right. You got a question. Okay. What's the joke? Huh? Um, I don't know. Like later. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know what when pizza pizza day is like. We rotate the families. For the <laughs> we had one a couple weeks ago. Anyway, Betsy. Well, your situation is a little bit different because you're a nurse's aide. You have to take care of your patient. It's not like you're in the hospital. So you have to be involved because it's your patient. Uh, because you're there because this person can't take care of themselves. So you fall into the category of the watchman. You know, your patient has to be taken to the Catholic hospital. Uh, the Catholic church. Okay. Um, and you have to take... Thank you, sir. Um... Fruit from the garden. 
demonic stuff. It's tomatoes. Okay. Um, as for ourselves celebrating birthdays and things like that, Jewish people don't celebrate birthdays. The two birthdays that we see in the scriptures, somebody dies. Uh, we see um, uh, uh, in Egypt, um, the baker dies. Um, at Pharaoh's birthday party. And then in the Brit Hadashah, we see John die. Because Herod was so happy with the way his daughter danced. Well, it was his sort of daughter-ish type. Let's not, that, that, it's a study for another time. Okay, but you're, you're working for this person. Like Rav Eduardo, you know, he has a regular job. But at Christmas time, his company throws a Christmas party. He chooses not to go to the Christmas party. You can't choose to not take your patient who you're working for, who's paying your salary. Because that's your job. You have to, you, now you don't have to sing La Cumpliano, Feli. Okay. Um, but you have to take care of your patient because that's your job. Okay. Um, so, yes, sir. No, your job is, you're not, like, the two, the two examples. Uh, Raved, the company's having a Christmas party. You have a, a choice whether or not to go to the company Christmas party. Betsy's job is to take care of this person. So... If the person the person's going to a restaurant, it's her job to take care of her patient. If the patient is, it is your job. Now she can ask to be taken off the case. She has to take care of her patient. Right, so she can... She, she knows where she stands in her but she, So, So, by... I don't know. I, I, just, I guess I see it differently. Um, by her taking it to the Catholic Church would be like condoning idolatry. You're not partaking in it. You're doing your... your what is her job? To, to, to care for the needs of the patient. Right. She's private duty nurse's aide. Okay, so she can ask to be removed from the case from that day? But her job is to take care of that patient. It's private duty. It's not hospital. Where Rav Ed is working for th this company, the company is having a Christmas party as they do every year. He's not going to go to the Christmas party because that's not part of his job. Okay. So you can ask your boss to be removed from the case from that day or let's have somebody cover you. But your job is to take care of your patient. Uh, you know, Robinson Kelly had to go to, you know, when she was pr doing private duty nursing. So when your patient has to be transported from, let's say, home to a dialysis. Okay. 
If you're a private duty nurse, sometimes you have to go with that patient to the dialysis unit. Because that's your job. You're not partaking in the wafer that the Catholics are going to give. Your patient is partaking in the Catholicism. Like maybe her patient wants to go receive, uh, I guess, communion or something. But your job is to wipe, wipe her spit from her mouth. You're not partaking in the, the paganness. You're just taking care of your patient. It just happens to be in that building today. But your job is to make sure her nasal cannula is still in her nose so she can breathe. You're not partaking in the, the ceremony. You're taking care of your patient. Now, you are close to the boundary marker. But so then you can ask to be removed from that case from that day. But your, your employer might not like that. So you have to discuss it. But you're not partaking in the ceremony. You're helping to move your patient. You're helping to roll her up the, the aisle. But you're not partaking in the Catholic ceremony. You're taking care of your patient. In healthcare, there are certain jobs where you have to take each situation in light of the scriptures. Like we were talking about your beard for working for, the, for security. The police don't want you to have a beard because it's a weapon that can be used against you. But then again, a couple of million Sikhs can't be wrong in the army in India. But people do grab your beard because they grabbed it when I worked on the ambulance. And, and mine was short. But it can... so. You have to deal with that with your employer. As a firefighter, you cannot have a beard. Because you're in a fire, you can't breathe the fumes. Or you'll be a dead firefighter. So you, you fit the criteria of a watchman. Dr. Mark, as a surgeon, cannot have a full beard. And in Israel, doctors don't have beards that are surgeons because it breaks the barrier of uh, protection. Because, you know, you're over, you know, I'm, I don't know how I even have a beard. There's always hair coming out. I'm like, you know, it's amazing. Well, what comp comp company? It's yeah, but that's that's in. We're talking about medicine. Okay, in restaurant you can have a beard thing, but they really don't like it. In surgery, you as a surgeon, you cannot have a beard. As a firefighter, you cannot have a beard. Because you'll have your oxygen on and the flame will get, and then you'll have a burnt face. <laughs> and firefighting... In all the police departments that I work for, 
I've worked for three different police departments. You could have a mustache, but it couldn't go past your mouth. Um, but the police department, the PD itself, could not have a beard. It was a policy of the police department. Wait. It's each department. Now, the New York City, New York City PD just got sued and lost. Okay, because they had an Orthodox, they had a Muslim and an Orthodox Jew sue them. It is really a risk. Because this is grabbable. And it hurts. Okay. Now the Sikhs generally have theirs bound. You ever see the Sikhs are the ones with the hats? They're, 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 I mean, they're, they're very hairy people. Okay. Um, so when you're pursuing righteousness, you have to think about what type of position you're working in. You know, you're a waitress at Hooters. You you could you could you can't work there because you got to show your Hooters. And if you got little Hooters, you got to make them stand up Hooters. Okay, but you have to think about your job. I knew that when I went was part of the other congregation. I knew the owner of the Laugh Factory. Uh, the Laugh Factory is a comedy club in New York City. Um, he was very good friends with Eddie Murphy. And in Beverly Hills Cop, the guy that comes at the end, whose house Eddie Murphy was at, His name is Richie Tinkinen. Tinkinen. He's the owner of the Laugh Factory. And he got saved. And he asked me, what do I do? Because he's, he owns the Laugh Factory. The Laugh Factory sells alcohol. And people blaspheme the name of God as they're in their part of their comedy. He says, what should I do? I said, you got to pursue righteousness. He pursued the world. He didn't want to sell his company. He didn't want to sell his company. It's my livelihood. Once God chooses to awaken your spirit, sometimes it's a very hard decision. And don't tell me it's too hard. Because I've changed my life in a lot of ways. So, and lost a lot of friends, family members, and a beautiful home. Because God doesn't pay nearly as well as the world does in most instances. <laughs> Especially when you're doing video work and you're shooting weddings. Okay. What, when are most weddings? Friday night and Saturday night. And when you're making a lot of money per day. Okay. That's hard to give up. Making movies, working in clubs. Um, I, did, I was engineering one party. 
I don't recommend seeing this movie, but the movie Scarface. In one scene in the movie with Al Pacino, he dumps over a pound of, a minimum it was a pound of cocaine. At the party I was doing for a very big band, I won't say. Uh, there was that much cocaine and more there. Okay. When you're in with that crowd and God walks into your life pursuing righteousness is, is a hard decision because I can't do this. But Yeshua says in Matthew 5 verse 10 here how blessed are those who per are persecuted because they pursue righteousness for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. I can't even say the words that people said to me after I left the industry. The a lot of the words began with the letter F. And my title was a big A and something else that followed it. But when you choose to pursue righteousness and you achieve that goal, When you reach the end of the race, you will be part of the kingdom of heaven. And I believe in heaven. I believe in hell. And I believe that there's a God. And I believe that he only lets in certain people. So he's going to give He's going to let you live at his house only if you're pursuing his type of righteousness. Now the word righteousness in the CJB is found 309 times. Salvation is only found once. Shabbat is found 116 times. So this is pretty important to Jehovah our Father. But here in verse 10, it is personal. Blessed are those who are persecuted, meaning it's personal. Because Individually, we have to seek righteousness. Now, we have to understand this verse and what righteousness is in understanding uh, Hebrews 13, verse 8. Now, what does Hebrews 13, verse 8 say? The pizza is hot, it's warm, and then it's cold. Okay. Hebrew, Messianic Hebrews 13 verse 8 says what? Yeshua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he's the same, we're going to look at the word righteousness. And we're going to see what it means in the, the Tanakh. What does Zadik mean? Or Zedika? Okay. What does this righteousness mean? Now remember, once it, we understand the meaning, it doesn't change once you get to the Brit Hadashah. 
Going on to the next slide. Let's go to Bereshit, Genesis 18, Bereshit. Bereshit 18, verse 17 through 20. Shannon, voracious. Ashkenazi. Genesis 18, that's in the big inning. The Mets don't have many of them this, this year. Are they 16 games out of first place? What? I think the last time I checked. They should have stood home this season. Well, you got to practice. Makes perfect. How many years have they been practicing? Let me see. 69, 83. Oh, how many years? Wow. Hey, Thurman, check the gas tank. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Genesis 18, verse 17 through 20 says, Jehovah said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Inasmuch as Abraham is sure to become a great and strong nation, and all the nations of the earth will be blessed by him. For I made myself known to him so that he will give orders to his children, to his household after him, to keep the way of Jehovah and to do his right and just, so that Jehovah may bring about to Abraham what he has promised him. Jehovah said, The outcry against Saddam and Amorah is so great and their sin so serious. Amen? Amen. So he's going to give orders. To his family, Abraham, to keep the way of Jehovah and to do his right and just. Right and just in whose eyes? In, in Jehovah's eyes. How does he know what's right in Jehovah's eyes? Because Moses ain't born yet. Moses ain't, ain't born yet. Aaron's not the high priest. How is he going to know how to build an altar? How is he going to know what to offer on that altar? How is he going to, you know, who's his mother anyway? His mother's a goy. So Abraham can't get citizenship in the land. <laughs> because his mom's a goy. He was the first and last Jew. <laughs> okay. Because his son marries a goy. Okay. That's in last week's message. Okay. So keeping the way of Jehovah... And to do what is right and just. Okay. So righteousness. Is keeping the way of Jehovah. Righteousness. Is teaching your children. How to keep the Shabbat. Not going to the beach on Shabbat. Not cooking on Shabbat. Not going into the water on Shabbat. Yeah, is the, be is the beach good? Yeah. Um, but not on Shabbat. Okay. On Shabbat? Mikvah? That's a very interesting question. Would you do a mikvah on Shabbat? Then what? How would you be keeping the kadosh mikra if you were in the mikra in the mikvah? Well, one second. So playing one. Okay. When Yeshua spat and and made mud and put it on the guy's eyes, he cleaned his eyes with water. Is that the mikvah? Is that the mikvah? So, so, Bubby, so let me ask you a question. Uh, 
Well, you're, you're, you're doing the mikvah to enter into Shabbat, a full mikvah. But not on Shabbat. You asked on Shabbat. Aaron and his sons did a full mikvah before entering into Shabbat. Aaron and his sons did a full mikvah before entering into Shabbat. Because the Zohar says that you're on Shabbat. Because the Zohar says that. The Zohar! The Zohar! Oh, I love the Zohar. I love mysticism. I really like Kabbalah too. So did Britney Spears. The Zohar? Is the Zohar given by Hashem? You got, you got to get the whole, it's holy alright it's full of holes the Zohar is even beyond Talmud as garbage it's Jewish mysticism hence Hence, it is witchcraft. Well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this question, Ezekiel. Is there any mistakes in Zohar? Can I know? There's no, there's no, I guess. So that would be a can. Wait, now let me ask you another question number two. Is there any mistakes in Torah? I didn't ask that question. Is there any mistakes in Torah? Can I look? So why don't we stick with what is perfect? So we're not going to go to Zohar. You can go to Jonathan Kahn for that. He loves Zohar. But what I'm talking about here is righteousness. And where will I find righteousness? In Torah. And Torah lives inside of us. Okay, because when Adam bit the fruit... The etrog, the pomegranate, the avocado, the fig. We don't know. The watermelon. Uh, no, watermelon grows on a vine. Why did Yeshua curse the fig tree? Because he was hungry. But we don't know. We don't know. We just assume. Okay. So when he bit the fruit, all knowledge of what was righteous and unrighteous came into his kepi, his understanding. That was Yiddish. Okay. So we are to teach our children what is righteous. What would be righteous? Okay. The seven holy days. Shabbat. Kosher. Yes. Okay. So, this is the beginning of what righteousness is. Now, let's look at verse 20. Jehovah said to the outcry against Saddam and Amorah is so great. And their sin so serious. Okay. How could God judge them. If they didn't know what righteousness was. So Yeshua is saying. You're going to be persecuted. 
Because you're pursuing righteousness. You're telling the person who's in a homosexual relationship that is, you're not getting into heaven. No matter what the Lutherans say. Or the Methodists say. Because God calls it an abomination. But also what was going on in Amora. Sexual fornication. So those, uh, okay. It just says sexual fornication. And you get that in the Brit shop. So you would set fornication. Where would you find the criteria primarily in what chapter of Torah? Okay, Leviticus has got a bunch of chapters. 18 and 19. And 20. Okay. That, that, those chapters give you a good understanding of what God says is good sexually and what is bad. Okay, so Amora was being chastised for what they were breaking in Torah, but Torah was not written. Because Torah is in our heart. Saddam was being chastised for homosexuality. As we see in Genesis 18, and then subsequently in chapter 19. So righteousness simply would be knowing what proper sexuality is what proper sexuality is and what isn't. Like, can I have sex with my sister? No. Okay, because once the, the Libaim were put in place, then these rules were set. Going on to the next slide. Devarim. De, Devarim 6, verse 24 and 25. De Deuteronomy. And there should be E R E instead of E I R. I put the wrong there. This is what happens when people are talking to you and you're trying to type. And the key. At, anybody who has the notes, the, the PowerPoint. The, at, e, at the bottom of each slide, it's, it says key. This is the, uh, how you want look at those verses. Okay, it's going to give you a, a question that will be answered by the verses that are on the slide. Okay, we are also working on this to chat, translate this into Spanish. So that all, all these will be available in Spanish. This particular ver chapter uh, 5 verse 10 is 100 slides. Okay, Deuteronomy 6, verse 24, 25. Jehovah ordered us to observe all these laws to fear Jehovah Elohim always for our own good so that he might keep us alive as we are today. It will be righteousness for us if we are careful to obey all 
these mitzvot before Yehovah Elohim just as he ordered us to do. Amen? So in verse 25, righteousness goes together with being careful to obey all the mitzvot. Not just the ones you like. A lot of people are good at the ones that they like. But they don't want to pursue righteousness in ones that they don't like. Like, can't I drink a couple of beers? Okay, what's the purpose? What's the purpose of drinking the beer? With alcohol. Now, you can drink near beer. It's alcohol-free if you want the taste. Can you cook with near beer? Near beer is beer without the alcohol. Then why cook with it at all? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, won't won't. Now, now let me ask you a question. Okay. Okay. Now, margarita. Beer contains 5% alcohol by volume, like wine. Um, if it has a 5%... Wine has 12%. 12%. 12%. 12%. Well, the vino tiene 12%. All right, well, what's the question? She's saying if, if, alcohol, if beer has 5%, which is less than, than, than wine, and you cook with it. What's the purpose? What is the purpose of cooking with the cerveza? Well, it's delicious. Chicken stew is delicious with beer. Cooked with beer. Why can't you have non-alcoholic beer? Because why? In Deuteronomy, we stone the son who gets drunk. Okay. Uh, wait, one at a time. If you want to play the game, let's play the game. I like the game. I like the game. My first question, what is the purpose? You said it tastes good. Can we get beer that doesn't have alcohol in it? Let me ask you a question. Can you get a non-alcoholic beer to do the same thing? Since everybody's saying the, the alcohol evaporates. Then let's not have alcohol at all. Yeah. Near beer. And there's actually more now. Okay. Okay. Now, what is the purpose? Tradition got us killed. And Yeshua says it to the, to the Pharisees. 
you know, you, they say you don't do the tradition of the elders. You don't wash your hand. You don't wash your hands like the elders. Where in Torah does it say how to wash your hands? Now in Yoma it says how to wash your hands. Yoma. 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 Okay. Um, Margarita. There's another thing. Another thing. The wine. Then, if you cook a chicken in the oven with that wine, it's delicious. So, you use grape juice, right? My wife cooks lots of things. Even my mother, we bake chicken every way possible. There's many ways to cook a chicken. That doesn't require alcohol. What we're talking about here is the word. Okay, so one second. I love playing chess, it's wonderful. Okay, so for seeking righteousness, and we stone the child who gets drunk, then should we be utilizing these things when not appropriate? Now, for Shabbat, we have to have a wine offering. And God talks about having wine. Because he designed it for a particular purpose. And scientifically now we know those purposes. But having just a beer because I want a beer. Is that a godly purpose? And why do you want a beer that must have alcohol? If you're pursuing righteousness, if we're careful to do as he ordered us to do, then we'll be blessed. Yes, son. What is the purpose for the alcoholic wine? Is that what God said? Is the wine offering in the food? So, I'm going to teach to be careful and to side on the air of caution. So, if God is saying, don't get drunk, Well, I can handle my, my liquor. Yeah, I've known a lot of people like that. So, God says to have a glass of wine and a wine offering. But he, where did he say cook with it? Does... Drinking it, do something for your body. And does, it's antioxidants. So when, now let's take this further. Oh, this is beautiful. 
Now, Jehovah says, don't cook a goat in its mother's milk. Why specifically a goat? Because when you do that, it makes a toxic thing that when you eat it, will make you very sick. So, if you're cooking with the wine, and God says to drink the wine, could, is there a possibility that changing the heat index of the wine does something chemically to the wine that could be bad for you? Yes, it's a good, very good possibility. Okay, so... Because if it does create a chemical change that does you harm, everybody's had chicken marsala. I agree. And nobody has died or gotten sick from it. Unless the chicken itself wasn't cooked right. Now, here in verse 25. Huh? Now in verse 25. <laughs> the Lord says to be careful. Is that being careful? So, does just because somebody came up with a recipe, did you eat pork? Yeah, and I got sick quite a number of times. But you still ate pork. Did you eat shrimp? Scongili, calamari. Did you get sick from all these? No, no, but. You can, yes, if it's not cooked right yet. Were you a diabetic all your life? No, I wasn't. Hmm. Be careful. Yes. <laughs> the Lord designed a body to be perfect. The Lord designed the body to be perfect. They are not the ten recommendations. They're the ten commandments. Because He is omnipotent. And if we're pursuing righteousness, then we pursue His commandments. So, he says don't get drunk. Does chicken marsalis taste good? Yes, it does. But, you can always get an, a wine that's non-alcoholic, non-alcoholic wine. And do the same taste. Can? Yes, but how if non-alcoholic wine is great juice? No, they, well, it's not just particularly, it's different types of grapes, and it's, they're not adding right. the alcoholic process. Well, the alcoholic process comes from yeast. It comes from fermentation. Yes. So they're not adding that in, but they're still making wine. This is not the yeast is actually in the air. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, that's, that's it. Okay. Yes. So in verse 25... And then we'll close. It will be righteousness for us if we are careful to obey all these mitzvot before Jehovah Elohim, just as he ordered us to do. Yeshua says, pursue righteousness. The world has its way of doing things. But the king has his way of doing things. Our job is to pursue and be careful. So if God says to stone the, the son that gets drunk. 
dijo que se Do you think he just started out being a drunk? Most people don't start out being chain smokers. Most people, when they have their first uh, drink of hard alcohol, go... Right? How does it happen? Because they're not careful. And when we start to push the rock, it starts to roll. And a body in motion tends to stay in motion. But a body at rest tends to stay at rest. On that note, we're going to close our study for tonight. And we are on slide number 85. 85. All right, let's, any questions from the Skype land? Any questions from WebEx land? No more questions in here until after we close. Definitely no wine in the food. No alcoholic wine. No, no vino alcoholic. Huh? Is sangria alcoholic? I used to drink it heavily. How much of this sangria are you drinking? Let's close and pray. We'll discuss that later. Thank you, Lord, for fermentation. Thank you, Lord, for your word. May we all be careful with your word. For you will bless us if we are careful. Thank you, Lord. Give us a heart that chooses the higher road and looks at the ancient paths as we see in Yirmiyahu 6, 16 and chooses the ancient path of righteousness. In your name, Yeshua. Amen. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnant's Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer.
Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend a day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our King's Word. We close this Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and Biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B E. T H G O Y I M dot org. Our phone number is 973 338 7800 or 978 2 Yeshua. That's 978, the number 2 Yeshua. Shalom.